This video will focus on the last hour of Amelia Earhart and Fred Noonan's final flight. Their disappearance occurred on July the 2nd, 1937 from Leigh, New Guinea to Howland Island. I will identify the probable location of the crashed aircraft based on evidence later shown. This is a satellite image showing the approximate location of the aircraft in relation to Howland Island. The aircraft should be located approximately 25 miles east-northeast of Howland Island. The depth of the water in this location is estimated to be around 18,000 feet. Amelia Earhart, born in Kansas in 1897, was the first female aviator to cross the Atlantic Ocean solo in 1932. Earhart became world-renowned for her record-breaking flights and boundary-pushing adventures, making her one of the most famous women of her lifetime. Earhart, however, is best known for her disappearance during an attempted first female circumnavigational flight with her navigator, Fred Noonan, in 1937. Born in 1893, Fred Noonan, pictured here with Earhart, was an early aviation pioneer, navigator, and sea captain. Noonan spent many years as a navigator for Pan Am World Airways, navigating flights across the Pacific Ocean and the Caribbean Sea. Considered one of the best of his time for his navigation skills, he was chosen for the circumnavigation flight by Earhart in 1937. This is a photograph of Earhart's Lockheed Electra 10E. She was known to fly in the front left of the aircraft as captain and pilot. Noonan was located in the right rear of the aircraft with a small window to look out of on the right hand side. Earhart and Noonan would begin their round-the-world flight on June 1, 1937, from California and head east through several stops including Miami, South America, Africa, India, Australia, and New Guinea. The flight was lost traveling from Ley, New Guinea to Howland Island. The final two stages of the flight would have been from Howland Island to Hawaii and then from Hawaii to California, completing the trip. It is important to note that the flight over the Atlantic from South America to Africa ended up 60 miles north of the planned destination. Earhart wrote a note to Noonan and asked why this happened. There are two long-standing theories as to the aircraft's location. One was that they flew to another island. This theory is not plausible. The radio signals from the aircraft to the Coast Guard cutter were at an S5 strength during the last hour of flight near Howland Island from 7.42 a.m. to 8.43 a.m. An S5 radio signal strength is within 30 miles of the Coast Guard cutter Itasca. They were extremely low on fuel at 7.42 a.m. The second theory was that they fell short of Howland Island. This theory is not likely. At 6.14 a.m., Earhart and Noonan reported that they were 200 miles out. At 6.45 a.m., Earhart and Noonan reported that they were 100 miles out. They flew towards Howland for another hour until 7.42 a.m. at 130 miles per hour, placing the aircraft past Howland Island, not short of the island. The fall short theory began in the 1950s from literature stating that the aircraft traveled at 120 miles per hour during the flight. This estimate is based on a radio transmission identifying a position early in the flight from the aircraft back to New Guinea. Because of this theory, an area of approximately 1,800 square miles of the ocean floor west and northwest of Howland Island has been searched. The aircraft was not located in this area. Here is the flight path from Ley, New Guinea to Howland Island. 2,565 miles at a heading of 79.64 degrees. Howland Island is a remote place in the center of the Pacific Ocean. It is a very small, narrow, and flat atoll that rises 20 feet out of the water and is half a mile wide and one and a half miles long. Howland Island would be easy to miss. As this image shows, a one half degree off in navigation would lead to missing the island by more than 26 miles. The Coast Guard cutter Itasca was anchored offshore of Howland Island to the northwest. It was there for the purpose of aiding Earhart and Noonan in finding the island by radio assistance and laying down smoke. This is the original handwritten radio log of the Itasca from July 2, 1937. 
The radio log illustrates the communications between the Itasca and Earhart upon her approach to Halland Island. This is a transcription of the Itasca's July 2nd radio log. There are portions of this radio log that are extremely important in identifying where the aircraft crashed. We need to focus on this part of the radio log. 0614, 200 miles out, no report on radio strength, laying down heavy smoke. 0645, reported 100 miles from the island, reception fair. 0742, plane's position reported as near the island and gas running low, no radio signal strength logged. 0758, plane reported as circling and requested vessel to transmit on 7500 KC for bearing. Reception very good, considered an S5+. 0800, plane reported receiving our signals but unable to get a minimum for a bearing. Good reception. 0843, reported as being on line 157.337 and running north and south courses. Good reception. Good reception is considered an S5. Radio log. With the estimate of 200 miles out from Howland, at 6.14 a.m., Noonan would have estimated the average flight speed near 129 miles per hour plus, 18 hours, 14 minutes flight time, distance traveled, 2,356 miles. With the estimate of 100 miles out from Howland at 6.45 a.m., Noonan would have estimated the average flight speed at 131 miles per hour. 18 hours, 45 minutes flight time, distance traveled, 2,456 miles. They did not cover 100 miles in 31 minutes. They covered approximately 67.67 miles. With the estimate of 131 mile per hour flight speed, 2.183 miles per minute, the aircraft would have passed Howland Island at 7.35 a.m., likely slowing and adjusting altitude to 1,000 feet. Radio transmission at 7.42 a.m. near the island, 7.58 a.m. circling. 6.45 a.m. Earhart and Noonan reported they were 100 miles out from Howland Island. This report is believed to be correct. Noonan adjusted his 200 mile out estimate from 6.14 a.m. to a more accurate 100 mile out estimate at 6.45 a.m. This estimate was likely based on a 6.20 a.m. sunrise time at the location 100 miles west of Howland Island. This estimation of location is 25 minutes after sunrise, or 6.45 a.m., as reported in the radio log. To get an accurate east-west location in 1937 using a sextant, the navigation instrument would need to be used for 25 minutes or more after sunrise. It appears that Noonan expected to arrive at Howland Island at 7.30 a.m. Howland time. At 7.42 a.m., the aircraft would be 10 to 15 miles past Howland. Gas running low, 30 minutes remaining. At 7.58 a.m., the aircraft would be approximately 15 to 20 miles past Howland, circling. 7.35 a.m., the aircraft was passing Howland Island approximately 15 to 20 miles north. 7.42 a.m., the aircraft had flown past Howland Island 15 miles. Radio research data indicates that the aircraft was at a maximum distance of 30 miles from the Itasca at this time. 7.58 a.m., the aircraft was around 15 to 18 miles past Howland, northeast and circling. Radio research data indicates that the aircraft was at a maximum of 18 miles from the Itasca at this time. 7.58 to 8.43 a.m., the aircraft was circling northeast of Howland, then began running north and south on the 157337 line. This 157337 line is a compass heading that is roughly 90 degrees to the sunrise and is a way to perform a search pattern without covering the same area of ocean twice. During the last hour, 7.42 to 8.43 a.m., the aircraft would have covered less than 120 miles, first circling northeast of Howland, then running the 157337 line. During the last hour, the aircraft stayed in the S-5 radio range. The S-5 radio range is within 30 miles of the Itasca Coast Guard Cutter, 
nothing east of Howland Island has been searched. The orange box is the best area to begin searching. The yellow box is the next best area to search. This is an estimated depth of 18,000 feet. If you or someone you know has the resources to search for this aircraft, this is where you will find it. Please do not hesitate to contact me at adinvestigates at gmail.com to contact me or for more information. Thank you for watching.